Hello, my beautiful lovelies, and welcome back to Intuitive Energies. My name is Jane, and I do general readings for Pisces. General. General, general, general. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get somebody and goes, this is very general. It's like, well, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I find that so funny. I think they mean it as, you know, as something like trolling comment but it's really not it's just <laughs> you just spoke the truth what do you want me to say i confirmed it yes it's a general reading that it it is exactly what this is so um i won't be giving you specifics about your life what we explore here is the energies of the weeks as they go by um uh, referring to the cosmos the moon the pisces energy and um it's more like Oh, I don't know, energy is how to um, help you through life, you know, how to help you move forward. Um, everything I talk about here is to empower you. It's to give you a leg up, right? So use it as such and just, you know, don't sweat it. You run your own life, so don't be looking for anybody else to be making decisions for you. You need to make, make decisions for yourself. Okay, so for all the ones who come here looking for somebody to tell them what to do, well, you got to put, put on your big boy pants and your big girl pants and, and live your life, okay? That's for Mama Jane. Go live your life, okay? Don't give your power away to anybody. Do it for yourself. So, having said all of that, da, 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 we are leading in with this, as I was putting back my decorations. Um, we have the Ten of Gifts for the ground and the Nine of Fire, and this one says protection, preparedness, resilience. And that's what I feel. Um, your, your ground right here tells a little story. You don't need to go that far with it. You just need to look at it. It says your gifts, your Ten of Gifts, your Ten of Cups, your wonderful gratitude, all the wonderful blessings that are in your life, they come because you have been, you have prepared and you've been resilient through your life. Okay, all of the stuff that you has, have been through has been leading you to your best life. That's the whole point to all of this. It's the whole point to everything. Okay, you either pick up on the cues now or later or much later, but eventually we all get it. We all get some wisdom from something. Okay, um... My biggest thing right now is whatever happens, I like to sit there and go, what is there for me to, to understand here? It doesn't mean that when something happens, you're not going to be totally frustrated and annoyed. If somebody gets in your face and upsets you, or a situation happens, it's going to really upset you. But if you can bounce back from it fast enough, you can probably say either A, there's something here that needed to be different that's why this happened, because I don't believe in the word coincidence. And, or, um, what am I seeing that I need to see right now? The blessing in disguise, okay? Sometimes there is a blessing in disguise, Pisces. You may never know what that is, okay? Um, you may never know what that is. So it, I, I speak of it in the terms of you're going down the road and you hit a roadblock and you have to take a, a, a you know, a, a different route that that takes you out 10 or 15 minutes out of the way but maybe that saved you from actually disappearing off the planet if you know what I mean you know maybe you would have been part of something that would have taken your life maybe there was a reason that you got a 10 minute um, increase in, in in delay but yet you are still here to live another day okay hey that rhyme let's let's put that a 10 minute a 10 minute delay may mean you live another day. Oh, wait a minute. Jane's got to write this down. This is pure. This is pure genius. This is pure genius. Wait. 10 minute. I swear I have to write it or I'm going to delay. Live another day. And it rhymes. I love it. Yeah. A 10 minute delay may mean you live another day. Psst, who knew, right? Poets and angels. All right, so if you look here at your crown, you have Krampus and adventure. And I, 
I feel that on the flip side, it's saying the same thing here. The restrictions, the things that have stopped you, the things that have um, um, led you down the garden path, it's also helped you free yourself from cycles of, of different things, okay, of, of guilt, of frustration, of addictions, and also turned your fives, your problems, because fives are hard cards, into a ten. Five plus five is ten, into adventure, right? So suddenly, you're going on new adventures. Right here, you're working. You have the Fool, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Three of Wands, which came in. You suddenly have, like, a a new renewed sense of going well I want to go on an adventure I want to you know I want to take off here I want to I want to do something so it's removing the restrictions so that you can live a life of, of adventure not a life of restriction right all right so let's keep going I'm going to take a little sip of cafe cocoa mm. My husband hates it, but I love it. There's nothing quite like coffee and chocolate. He's a coffee purist, so he's he drinks like dark roast. No sugar, nothing. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> You'd actually have to like coffee to drink that. <laughs> and yes, I'm being funny. So. All right, Pisces, so let's take another one of these. These are, what is it? I think they're called the Soul's Journey. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, that was fast. Karmic Completion. Lovely. Love it. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, as I talked before, I'm using William's deck, okay? And William's deck is the Field to Row. Um, William is a Sagittarius guy that came in. He was once a human being. He actually had a lifetime here that I can, that I hear about from him. And he was um, most likely a fire sign. I'm, I'm feeling Sagittarius, but it, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, but I'm feeling that he had a lot of roadblocks, a hard life, like something like, you know, you would, you put, put your palm, you know, on your forehead type of life, like, Oh God, like, but he, um, he says that he brought this on himself. This feels like the 10 of, uh, the wheel of fortune. It's like, um, the, but not only that, it feels more like the world as well. Because I, I look at the 10 in the world, like two and, you know, two, it's like a, the 10 is the first ending and then you continue towards the second ending. That's the way it feels within me. Like, you know, that's the halfway mark and then you go to the ending. So this feels like both. It feels like the halfway mark, but also completion of some sort. And that would make sense, especially with the Fool card coming in here. Um, I feel that you're coming to the end of something. Something that... Um, you've been working on for a while, okay? With these, you've been working on this for a while. And it's good. It's good. Okay, so that isn't the Fool's Journey. It's actually numerology because it's number 10, okay? So this is uh, the end of a lesson. Of course, karmic lesson or cycle where you're clearing contract and or a debt from your past. And that's what I feel that it's a contract more than a debt. I don't really deal more in debts. I find that kind of, mm, it depends on what you believe in. And it's not really in my scope. But I do believe that we're affected by our ancestors because it's passed down through the generations. Um, but I think we do have contracts filled out. Like I said with my father, he was going to be an antagonist. We shook on it. He came with me and he played his role to a T. He did it very well. But I think he was here to do that with other people as well. So... Um, I think in that, all of those lessons and everything else that came after from that lesson, in other words, 
the way you're raised sometimes you turn around and become a similar person or you have traits of that person which then goes and trickles down into relationships with other people correct so what happens there is that you're breaking yourself free of those things in other words you're seeing a different way of seeing things a different uh mindset that is now taking you to the next step in other words instead of going somebody did something to me i am a um, victim when they do something to you, go, what can I learn from this and use it going forward? That is a complete 360 of where you were. So that means karmic completion. You're no longer reacting to the first part like you would before as the victim. You are now reacting as an empowered person. That means you have broken the chains of Krampus. You're past that. So it's wonderful. I mean, it's wonderful. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. even though there are ongoing lessons to confront throughout the course of your life. In other words, this isn't the end of everything. You know, it's not just, okay, I'm done, you know. Um, you will never have to experience this particular lesson again. I love that. It's like, I um, don't have to react that way ever again. It's like something inside me has been switched over and now I'm different, right? Um, this card also represents a wheel of fortune, I already said. Whatever goes up must come down. Just the tides are constantly ebbing and flowing. You're encouraged to adapt to both the highs and lows of life. It's your ability to adapt that will make your dreams come true. This too shall pass in the face of each and every experience. And remain centered, grounded, and stable. That's what I mean. Persistent. So that you're always living in your gifts and your, um, in your gratitude. Absolutely. So yeah. This absolutely, I just want to change it because I feel like it's grainy a little bit. So sorry for the, you know, the glow. Okay, so we're going to use the filter out. So we're going to bring in William. Um, I said I was going to do this today. So hello, William. Hello. Um, dealing with fire energy, I sometimes have a hard time making it come across. I feel that I'm in a good space today. So, um... I, I, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, we'll just, we'll just start, begin, and see where it brings us, <laughs> all right, Six of Wands that's in reverse, and I also have the Queen of Wands, but she is upright. So, all right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is what I mean. I have to really listen because uh, with him, it's almost like it's a delayed reaction, but it's okay. I got it. Okay. So, the Six of Wands underneath is written success, but you have vibrancy, and that's what he's saying. It's not just about success, it's just n not always about this word, right? It's not always just about that. It's about vibrancy and it's vibration. Vibrancy is part of vibrations and the vibrations you bring in, right? Yeah, that's exactly what he's saying. So um, his life, he always speaks through his life. His life was always based on the levels of the success that he could reach. How much money, how much success, how much... Um, you know, kudos he could get, you know, how much, uh, you know, in other words, how much people looked up to him and, and type things. It was things that were really external and he based life on that success. So in that way, he failed. Okay. And he failed. He felt like he failed a lot. So he spent his life thinking he was a failure. And he says, that isn't the trick to life. The trick to life is vibration. It's vibrancy. That's the true mark of success. Because if you vibrate in low, in want, in lack, you're never going to feel success. Success comes from vibrating, your vibration being high. Um, having uh, confidence 
and being inspired and creative and feeling beauty and optimism and um, always living in inspired energy if you can, okay? Um, because he says as soon as you win, as soon as you are inspired by something, something new like the fool here, like that's showing up, you know, you get an idea and you're inspired by it, you're already succeeding. You've already succeeded in what you're doing because you already tuned it up. You already tuned up the vibration, okay? That's a good one. I like that, William. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. I I love that. That's a, such a great... That's that's great. <laughs> I mean, it's great advice. I can't... I cannot lie. I like that one. Um, and more and more, um, I think people... They say, yeah, vibration doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> but he says you'd be surprised how much it can. So in other words, if you're in the right vibration, you'll attract the right things to you and you'll end up having enough. And that's what you need enough, not more. You need enough so that you feel comfortable. Okay, it's about comfort and peace and vibration. It's not about accumulation of crap. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's good. The Three of Materials, the Three of Pentacles. The funny part of the Three Materials for me is Pentacles is about material things, but Three of Materials, in uh, when I learned the Tarot, and this is for me specifically, you guys. That's not what it means for everybody. It means for me. When I learned this, the Three, it was about uh, partnerships in spirit. Okay? And you have, like, my, my gang, I feel like, here. And... It's, I love the braid here because it feels like a braid. It's interwoven. Um, connect to the things that are interwoven to you. I'm going to, that's, that's what I feel like my, my guides, your guides, your spirit, you connected to source. Okay. If you had the tendrils coming down, they'd all, everything's interwoven with each other. You are never alone. You are part of source. Um, you are part of source. Even if you're alone in a room. You are part of something much bigger than this body. Um, your soul is intertwined with everything, okay? So, um, yeah, that's, that's the message here, okay? Um, tap into something bigger than yourself. Through all of these, especially two or three months... I think they really want you to default to this when things on the planet goes a little bit weird. When you're going like, oh, you know, um, it's the 3D, you know, like everything around you. Um, things that are like material, you know, like, I don't, have to, I don't know how to say this, you know, it's like the, the, the physical, the human world goes a little crappy. They want you to be able to tap in to the to the part of you that's that comes from something that's interconnected to everything okay to what you've forgotten because it goes all the way up here okay you've forgotten you're intertwined to all of this you're not separate at all okay knight of swords okay the faster you do this, the faster you're going to be able to move forward. Because the Knight of Swords is all about uh, speed. It's all about movement. I love that it's Pegasus here. Um, it's flying above. It's getting height. It's, it's picking up, you know, altitude. And again, that's what I feel. I feel like it's saying, like, pick up altitude on this. Um... You already know this, now put it into the mix. Like, put it into your life. Make it part of your life. Don't be all about the physical world and, and the everyday things. When, you know, something happens, you go, what's happening here? This is like, treat it like a school, you know. This is a school of life. What am I, what am I, what do I learn from this experience, this consequence, um, you know, what I did that's coming back to me, what somebody did that's that's touching me, um, good or bad, whatever you were seeing as good or bad in the past, I want you to just look at it as just 
a varied experience, right? Again, it's a lot of the, right here is the definition of things that we give. I'm looking at it like the definition of success. Is it about accumulation? Is it about positions? It's a, is it about, you know, um, some people would say, oh, being married for 36 years, that's success. Is it? Or is it just habit? Are you happy in those 36 years? Right? Um, I'd say success is, is having a healthy relationship, even if that means fighting with each other, right? Um, it means that there's tension. It means there's all kinds of things going on. Um, if you're just existing with each other, is that really the definition of success? So there's different things here working. You've got to really look into... It's like rewriting, rewriting the dictionary, your own personal dictionary anyway, and all of everything that it means to you. Yeah, no small feat here talking about rewriting dictionaries. But this is not the first time I've got the three of materials. I got it this morning in my own personal deck. So the three, the three of pentacles is coming in. This is a reconnection to something bigger than who we think we are. Maybe that's it. It's a connection to something bigger than who we think we are. This is the soul's journey that I'm pulling from. <laughs> Balance. I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world, and I do so without judgment. It's another way of putting it. You know, it's... it's it's realizing what's harmonious to you, what works for you. Instead of, you know, no, you know, just, yeah, clear up. It was going fuzzy here. Um, balance is what is balance for you. It's the Six of Pentacles, if I ever talk about it enough. It's figuring out what's good for you. But this is talking, again, of removing the definitions of good or bad. It's seeing everything as an opportunity to grow and learn, to balance things out. When something that doesn't feel good comes into your um, your space, you want to bring it back into balance. So you have to thank that thing because it's also made you realize, well, I don't like that. Or that doesn't feel right. And then you learn to either circumvent it or or see the signs before it comes back to you again. You know, it's it's all about learning this. And it's all about putting your balance, your personal balance, into your life. Okay, so let's... Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to take the Healing Light Tarot here now. Yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm taking my time uh, this week. It's it's because I, I feel like the messages they're trying to convey is meant for you to ponder. It's not meant for you to skim across. It's not like this knight of swords. You're not meant to just go, you know, lickety split, I've got this. You're meant to really sit with what's being said. It's like saying you won't, don't regret anything that's ever happened because it's brought you into harmony. It's brought you back to, I don't know, back to center, right? The two sides have shown you what you want, what you don't want. Um, and in that regard, there's just no, there's no bad here. There's just learning.
is just learning. So, yeah, you have the three. It's, again, another three, the three pentacles, three cup. It's a reconnection to something more. It's a reconnection to something more. I love this card. It's like they're, they're it's not like they are dancing, okay? They're recapturing something, a freedom, a freedom of being. Okay, there's freedom in this card. Your soul is free. It's not weighed down, is what I'm hearing. And I almost feel like they're saying, when you do feel weighed down, it's time to go back to basics. It's time to go back to your state of being connected to source to remind yourself that you are not you are not um, tied down. You're not bogged down. This is all by choice. This is all for learning. This is all to see what else you can do, what else you can explore, what other adventure you can have, how you can turn your fives into a ten, a ten of, of gifts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, let's take the Wisdom of the Oracle. A very modified Wisdom of the Oracle. This deck doesn't, I would say that this deck doesn't look this way. I have taken the white borders off and made them into, and and made them match with the edge. In some ways I've turned it into a pocket size. <laughs> I feel that you're, there's a five there too, okay? I feel that you're in between. I feel that you're in between the past with everything that you've learned and the future. Okay, you're in, you're in this space right here. You're in that new space. You're in the here and now. And it says like here, you're here with a little red flag, you know. Um, and you've got a lot of heart. You've got a lot of, there's a lot of potential here. It's kind of interesting because you have the door that's open, but it's blocked still. So you are definitely at the threshold of, of, of a major kind of moment of, you know, like, ha, I get it, where the doors will open, where you will understand. Um, this might be it, too. This might be it. And it's going to come, Pisces, uh, most likely in the way you react to something. Something is going to happen, and you're going to take, instead of the old, tried and tested, restrictive way, your brain or your, or your energy, your energetic field is going to kick in and react in a new way. You know? It would be like somebody coming around, being very angry at you, instead of just... You know, it's, they're serving you and they're angry at you and and for some reason you haven't done anything, but you're kind of looking at them and instead of going, well, to hell with you too, you suddenly see them as somebody who's, something's going on. You see how upset they are, you see how aggravated they are, you see how their entire demeanor, even if you don't know their backstory or what got them there, you can see how their entire demeanor is now affecting the people around them, the customers after you. Um, you're seeing all of that as a, wow, look at how that energy kind of touches everybody, right? And just seeing it that way instead of reacting, that's a complete different shift of the way you would react naturally 
and you didn't really do anything. Like nothing has changed. The person is still angry. You still don't know why. And you could still react and like, geez, that wasn't, you know, that didn't feel real great. But your, your energy shifted to see a different perspective. And that's going to be when you go, wow, where did that come from? I've never done that before. That's going to be brand new to you. That's going to be like, I'm seeing things in the here and now. And this is going to shape my future. I love that. I love that. That's happened to me quite a few times recently. And the more I, the more it happens, it feels like the more it's happening, right? For everything. Somebody dies, I see something like that. Um, somebody's mean, I see something like that. Somebody's kind, I see how it affects energetically. I see everything. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a really observing, and not only observing, but learning. It's almost like seeing the gift as it happens. It's, it's very, or the opportunities, right? Yeah, I love this. Not for you. Okay, so when I saw this, what I thought is, again, is not engaging in the normal way of doing things. The, and it's not the normal way. I'm going to take that word out. In the usual way that you have either seen um, practice around you. And I could even put the word toxic way that um, we've seen practice. We don't think it's toxic, but it is to our energy. Okay? Um, you're just like going, no. My fortune lies elsewhere. And that's what I was talking about. Pisces, um, happiness is not about fortune. It's not about the word success. It's about the vibration that you bring in. And I feel this is where you're going. I'm not playing this this game anymore. The, the rat race game, right? I'm done with this. It's being served up, but you're going, no, I'll pass. I, I would like to do something different from now on. I want to see the world in a different way because that's where it's going to take me. I'm going to live a life that I want to. I'm not going to be af afraid of adventure because I know it offers more learning, more teaching, um, and it's life, right? Life changes. That you can, you can rely on life to change, um, even if you don't want it to. You can... Just as the seasons change, just like as the sun comes up and the moon and the skies, the, everything, it, nothing stays still. So, the king of water, compassionate, understanding, and trustworthy. I love this. I love the way that he's got a hand on his heart. I love that the crown is in the tree. You feel the stability of Mother Earth, but also the love that comes from within. The word understanding is also hitting in a certain way that I feel that you are understanding things now. More on a much deeper level than before. We can be surface, but we can be really, really understanding, right? It was weird. I had like, um, I saw something in the corner of my eye and I'm still unsure what that was. So, Page of Air. Truthful, analytical, and outspoken. But as always with my page of air, I beg you to be careful because he has a very narrowed view. You see that? A very narrowed view. Um, I think this speaks of just not using just the mind to do things because we like to see things or hear things. Um, communication is key, right? And I was talking about definitions. Definitions come from communication, right? But... This is a problem with, 
they're bringing in all kinds of stuff here. Um, once you give a name to something, um, okay, so let me see if I can put this in, in, in words or sentences that I can string along that you'll understand. Dictionaries are fantastic things, but they are terrible things as well. Because once you wrote it down and put it in a book, then it becomes, it is so. Because we have written it down, it is so. Right? But by writing it down and giving it a specific definition with no room to grow, you now come up with a bigger problem. There's no flexibility there. Okay? So, that's what they're talking about with definitions and stuff. As wonderful as it is, or as wonderful as a tool it is to um, refer to, okay, to, to get some guidance towards, um, anything that's out there shouldn't be become law because you're kind of restricting everything, right? You're restricting its ability to grow. You're restricting its ability to be more. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you just uh, trample on everything that's been established because I think that's what the world's trying to do sometimes here. Um, looking in, I think to myself, yeah, I get your own words. Um, you, you can make up new words. It's not against the law. Um, but, um, yeah, you don't trample, you don't need to trample over everything that's established. All I'm saying is that just don't make it written in stone. Okay? Um... You need flexibility, and you need to be, you need not to have just a narrowed view of things, okay? I feel like he's just seeing with one eye here, okay? The rest of it is kind of blocked off. So, um, don't rely just on what you can see, rely on what you can feel. The vibration is more important than what you have in your hand, okay? In other words, like I said, success is not just about accumulating things. Success is in the vib vibrancy of joy, gratitude, and blessings that you feel within your heart. When you have that, and it takes a lot less time, believe me, to feel blessed and, and successful when you go from the heart space. Um, see everything as a wonderful lesson to be learned so that you can have great adventures going forward. You can rely on change um, because it is even in the planet, change happens every single day. Even a tree like this that you would say hasn't changed every day, there are changes that are happening every day. Even in your physical body, there are changes. So to try to stay still in a world of change would be will get painful at one point, okay? Hmm, all right. So, I don't, I don't, let's, let's pull from the Christmas deck here, the Yuletide deck, and then we'll, we'll call it a, we'll wrap it up for the day, for the crown and the ground. Five of good cheer. And a six of good cheer. In reverse. I feel I feel like they're they're gonna they're gonna say something here. So I'm just gonna
On the surface, there is little, if any, good cheer present in this card. The figure has gone through the motions of decorating the home for the season. The warm glow from the fireplace indicates that they are, to an extent, taking care of their basic needs. But there's a deep grief or sense of loss that is present and casting a gloom over the scene that bellies the cheeriness of the tree and garland. This individual finds this time of year immensely painful. As if every symbol, every bauble reminds them of something they can never again. This is a picture of loss, and usually through means of uh, separation. This is a face of loss and pain that comes with a price. Yet there's hope, for the cat is still content near the, her the, the earth. Uh, this is the fireplace. Implying that she is loved by one who is suffering in loss. There is still love to give. The two full cups on the earth imply that not all is lost and that the rainbow picture above the mantle tells them there's a path back to love and back to fulfillment. So it says Yotai can be a cruel reminder of the things and the people that we no longer have and it's okay to feel these things and even dwell on them a little if you must. Give them an ear so that you listen to the whispers of your pain and sorrow but don't feel overwhelmed by them. Emotional relocation is difficult and a challenging process of the human condition, but there is a rainbow bridge, and there are others who are deserving of your love and affection. You did not lose the ability to love. By losing something or someone you love, you are more resilient than you give yourself credit for. And I feel that this card really speaks of that as well. It is talking about that. It's talking about the fact that you have been resilient with the Nine of Fire. You have... Um, resilience and you can prepare this is preparing you for the joys right by seeing what is there and I know that that losing loved ones is hard um, and especially this time of year or just before this time of year would probably be very 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 hard um, so I can't speak I can't speak to you I can't take away your pain I wish I could um, if you are somebody who's experienced this or experienced the loss of somebody this year and have to go your first Christmas without them. Uh, I'm going to speak from the heart here. But, um, and this card, the six of good cheer, this is about nostalgia. This is, this is memories. So I think they're speaking mostly about a lot of this pain that you're going through. Even... Just think of it this way. If your loved ones could speak, if they had one last thing to say, do you not think that the one thing they would say, it says, thank you, thank you for missing me. Um, but we don't want you to stay in this type of energy, right? Would they want you to be unhappy and stay in a state of loss? Probably not. Probably not. They would want you to find a vibration of joy even if it's a memory of them that brings you joy and stay there with them for a while right um i always think that the best thing you can do for the people who have gone by is to remember them with love to talk about them when you get a chance to let yourself vibrate in the high energy of love that you feel for them because that's where you can find them again Okay, that's where you can be with them again. Change the narrative to that at some point. Change the narrative to that at some point to be in a vibrancy of success. Let them help you reach your goal and, and the time. The separation is not permanent. The separation, we all inediv inevitably get to that ending anyway, right? Some of us faster, some of us slower, but we all get there and we all get to um, be with the people we love again. So while you were here, um, they would want you to continue on your journey and happily, successfully. It's okay to miss them because I'm sure that they love being missed. Um, that means they mattered, right? So that's a perspective in another way. 
every time you miss them and your heart squeezes, think they must love that they know that they're loved, that they mattered. Right? So, little message of love from me to you. I know in, during Christmas season we're all about, yay, gifts and happiness and joy, but some of us suffer some real losses around this time. And I'm just putting out comfort to you, hoping that you just do the very best that you can. Um, keep living life, keep looking at life as a learning experience, everything in it, even the losses, okay? Um, and bring in love of the people that you miss, okay? Put that love in there. Remember them with love. I have pictures of loved ones on the wall, and I speak to them. I'm that weird person who talks to them in the middle of the day. Like, you know, when I do something ridiculous that they would have laughed at me, I tell them, you would have found this funny, wouldn't you? And I send love in that memory of that interaction. I invite you to do the same. I invite you to love these people and, and cherish their memory, okay? Don't live in the nostalgia of it. Don't live in the past. The future is not here yet. Be in the present moment. But bring your vibration higher. I think that's what it's been today about vibrations. That's all we've been talking about is vibrations upon vibrations. How to bring, how to make that vibration higher. All right, Pisces, it's been long enough today. I, I apologize, I ran long, but um, there was an extra message with this and, and um, I was trying to say it without sobbing because I know some of you are really suffering right now. And um, I'm, you know, you're not alone. You came here for a reason and if it was just this message, there it is, your loved ones don't want you to suffer and I don't want you to suffer. I want you to hold that beautiful light of love when it concerns these people, their energies. They're not gone. They're just back to source. And I want you to cherish them. Okay? So I'm sending you lots of love and light, my beautiful ones. And I will see you tomorrow. And we're going to be looking at the before and the after. Take good care of yourself. Bye for now.